Right, okay, we are live. Cool. So, uh, tell me yourself, what exactly w would be your concerns for this match in particular? The laning phase and stuff? Uh, yeah, fr from the laning stage, my approach was to uh, not really just push, uh, like, not really go for the Vortex build because I watched this Lil Pensy guy, uh, the good stone player, and he mentioned that uh, against Puck, he never really. Um, um, here, how do you say it? Uh, uses or skills Vortex in the beginning because he cannot really kill him. And if he says that, that I'm, then I'm sure, like, I'm not also not uh, able to. Uh, only if the poke is bad. And yeah, this uh, I, I wanted to judge it from the lane phase. But uh, most of the time with Storm, I have a lot of success by just really rushing Orchid, uh, Orchid and uh, just uh, making sure that uh, I have good game or just just uh, farm a lot till I have Orchid and um, I watch the side lanes if they really dive my um, my uh, lanes and then I would TP but mostly I'm just pushing the wave out as fast as I can with higher le level on remnants I stick the jungle and then I yeah go for Orchid and then I try to make plays depends like I'm <clears throat> I I realize I'm just uh, yeah. I, uh, in the past, I always went Bloodstone and had more success, but uh, currently, yeah, like uh, many Storms are going Orchid and I also wanted to practice it, so, uh, but I also know that you can fuck up if it's go coming too late, uh, for example, or if you go in um, for kills but die and so on, and uh, it also happened this game, but all in all, I had a pretty good performance, I would say. And your question was also regarding the enemy um, lineup, I think. I was aware that <clears throat> uh, the Void Spirit and Enigma <laughs> both have very good uh, ways to catch me. Also Puck with Silence and his uh, ultimate. Uh, yeah, for Snapfire and Hoodwink, I was thinking if Snapfire really stands somewhere ulti, it's my, it would be my job to um, jump in and cancel the ultimate because he's uh, station, stationary, right? He's just standing there shooting. And I think either even um, no, either Slark or me can cancel it from uh, jumping at him. Uh, yeah, despite that, I, I, like my uh, biggest concern for the game was that I need to be aware where Void is and Enigma. Like, and Puck is uh, also uh, situational because I think he went for Blink Dagger and then I didn't really want to go in first. I wanted to always go uh, in a bit later. I think. Right, right. Uh, let's tra trace back a little, a few minutes uh, back when you said that you will approach this lane as a farm lane. Yeah. Because because you because the guy said that vortex here is not good. But did you understand yourself why is vortex useless in this lane? Um, I would say because uh, Puck has a good escape mechanism and uh, with but depending on how he skills, um, he uh, does a skill build. If he really goes orb and um, the silence, uh, it's most likely that he will uh, hit and um, silence and um, do more damage to me than me to him. Uh, I do to him, I think. Yeah, it's it's basically if the enemy possesses a good escape mechanism and Vortex becomes unreliable, it is a liability to skill it. So Buck has that with phase shift Ember. Does that with a Slayer Fist, and there's oh. also Queen of Pain with the blink, and I, uh, there's a few more heroes I'm not thinking of. But the point is, if if Vortex is a liability, then yes, you're always better off not skilling it. Now the exception is if you see enemy playing poorly, like yeah. uh, not using spells correctly, or if you're ahead uh, on your skill level of the enemy. Or just notice him doing missteps, misplays, or just sitting low on health. Then you can usually actually bait him into using the defensive. So same with Buck, same with Ember, same yeah, yeah. with Queen of Pain. If they use it offensively or they screw it up, then in that case you should absolutely try to convert this farm lane into a kill lane. Mm. So my point is that while Vortex is usually generally against equal skill level players, is usually a liability. There's always uh, a good thing to keep in mind at level 3, at level 5. If you are noticing a pattern of, mm -hmm. I would say, yeah. badness in the enemy play, 
then it would make sense to actually skill the Vortex, try to bait enemies defensive and then use the Vortex. And this is how you convert many farm lanes into kill lanes. Yeah, good point, good point. Uh, I, I don't really remember this game was, uh, I don't, four days ago or something. I don't remember how the laning stage was in detail. Right, now let's uh, discuss the draft a little bit. I would say this is a... From Storm's perspective, that's a game I would not want to play. While Puck might not be too bad before level mm -hmm. 6, after level 6 he he will combo you down. Add Enigma he will combo you down, add Void he will combo you down. And the worst part, all, all of their kits go through either Lincolns or BKB, so you cannot rely on yourself to initiate or be initiated on. You yep. you will yep. you will if if the, if your team is under farmed and no one can comfortably initiate, this game is a loss. So I I would think if I was a storm in this game, I would think that I must make sure that my side lanes are coming out equally, mm. because I myself will not have enough impact if my team is extremely behind. Yeah. I don't remember why I picked him because uh, I think it was more because of the quest or something, or maybe my other materials are banned. Uh, I don't really I like now seeing the enemy draft. I'm like, why did I even pick Storm? I mean, I I didn't see the puck, but uh, still Enigma and Void are really not so great against Storm. Actually, I don't really know why I picked him. <laughs> yeah. So so in these cases where you draft Storm but realize that there is not a good draft, you must. Think about the win condition, and in this game, I would say the win condition is making sure your team doesn't fall too far behind. Yeah, true. All right, let's see how the laning phase goes and what we can improve on. I can yeah. al already tell the block is going well. Now, as well, if we, if we think before the game begins about Buck's skill build, how much damage he can dish out, uh, usually Buck's will want to have level 3 phase shift so they can dodge some spells but if they have level 3 phase shift if they skill phase shift level 1 at level 3 this means one of their nukes will remain at level 1 which severely reduces Buck's damage output so yeah. if you think about it if you see Buck going phase shift at level 3 this means he will deal a little bit less damage and you can dance more comfortably around the creep wave which means you should have easier time securing the range creeps and the melee creeps and all in all you will trade less health than you would if Puck would level a nuke skill yeah. a second point at level 3 yeah just, some, just some, something to watch out for while laning continue please yeah uh, the puck, like um, in uh, in the matchup, puck versus storm. As a puck, uh, I think you would mix the second skill, right? The silence, because it also does uh, uh, equally damage as the uh, orb. And as puck, you can stand uh, next to a storm spirit and help him out. Right? Yeah, then that makes sense. As a puck, uh, the orb is only a value point for the securing runes and then the range creeps. But the silence okay. is, is his is puck's main bread and butter. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's begin. We've talked for ten minutes and nothing happened yet. Yeah. Right, let's let, let's fix that. Yeah, just sure. Well I, I I'm sure you could have seen that if Buck cared for it he could have denied the range creep. Uh yeah, because I hit it uh that it went in deny range. Yeah, if your plan is to get the range creep ASAP, you must not he hesitate. Like, as soon as you see those three creeps positioning to hit yeah. the range creep, that is your yeah. cue to walk over their ASAP and drop a remnant. Otherwise, wow. you you are risking a deny. Luckily, Puck, Puck was a little bit mentally FK, so nothing bad <laughs> happened. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you are right. You are right. I was late. First lane didn't went so well. I think he denied the next one too. <laughs> yeah, one another thing. If if you're set on killing the range creep first, this means you'll 
you have already decided that you will be pushing the lane. So your next job is to clear the rest of the creeps ASAP. So don't even bother hitting Puck. Your job is to finish rest of the creeps ASAP, ideally with no denies. So again, Remnant will help here. And w what happens then is Puck simply will not have time to harass you. He will have four creeps coming at him under his tower. You will be level mm. two. And that was the perfect moment to throw in some harassment yourself without taking any damage. Yeah, that's true. That's I think I do it. I'm not sure. We can see that in a few seconds. Oh, yeah. well, well, right now, what I've seen is you did hes hesitate a little. Yeah. Like we have a hit here to the puck. It's not the worst, but it can be improved upon. Yeah, yeah, I should have uh, like hit the creeps, focus more on farming the creeps. Yeah. Here I couldn't harass him because the uh, wave was too deep into the tower. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah. uh, the first waves didn't go so great. Here. Other than that, so far so good. A little bit damage taken, but the battle should be on the way. Yeah. I remember I TP back at minute three or something with the boots. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll see. Now the thing is, uh, you're really low on health here. Hmm. And if Buck would set his mind, he could actually kill you. <laughs> yeah, he didn't do it. It's actually good that you're this little away from the bottle, but if sometimes in a similar situation you would get your creeps denied a bit more and your bottle would be late, in this situation you should absolutely send out yourself a self. Yeah. Otherwise you will die before the bottle arrives. Yeah. I either die or be shut, shut off the wave. Mm. Seriously, with the Covenant Puck, Covenant and Puck, you should be dead here. Yeah, that's true. He d I don't remember. Maybe I die. Oh no, he his uh, light his orb wasn't good. Yeah, he wasn't so great. I also didn't do well. He sh he should have killed me. Yeah, your goal is to minimize losses until your region is secure. Yeah. In this case, the battle. Yeah. Usually, I uh, stack this camp when it's so far away. Yeah, didn't you learn this from me? Uh, yeah, probably. But I also, uh, in the past, when um, I played better, like some uh, weeks, a uh, month ago, I always stacked, um, stacked a bit more. Right now I'm going back to that. We will also see uh, some stacking later, I think, of the bigger camps. Yeah, okay. Yeah. A little bit of a note hmm? about the ward. When you send yourself a ward, yeah. be sure to plant it immediately. Otherwise, yeah, if you if you yeah if you hold it one second longer, a player would just simply check your inventory, yeah. see that you have a ward, and then later he would check again, see that you don't have a ward, and it's pretty People. easy to deduce where you have placed it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but if you if you place it immediately, he will simply not even know that you have bought a ward in the first place. Yeah, yeah, good point. I think I was a bit um. Concerned about the creep wave, which was uh, immediately in coming in. Yeah, usually you can just plant the ward any second you have it delivered because you are always near the cliffs, and yeah. anywhere you plant it on the cliff will still give you rune vision, and that's all you care about as a storm. Yeah, I was not sure. <clears throat> like, uh, I, did you see? I set my career a bit to the left because I wasn't sure if the creeps can kill it. I think they do, right? Because was uh, I accurate them to yeah uh, yeah take they them can. And, yeah was a bit uh, concerned then oh and and if you're not planning a kill lane then absolutely remnant level choose the better option yeah okay I wasn't sure if uh, what is better for farming then.
Yeah, Puck did skill f uh, phase shift, level 3. And in those cases, you can play a bit more aggressive with the creep wave. Because he will have limited damage. Yeah. Until level 4, that is. Yeah, that's a good time window for you to wave, wave clear the creeps and go back for the base, which I think you will have done it yeah. later. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I think with this wave, I push it out and then I TP back. With these kind of plays, every millisecond matters. So if you have set your mind on pushing out and teleporting back, just do it the exact frame mm. the last creep dies. Because yeah. five seconds of you walking back and pressing the button can mean a difference of one and two creeps. Yeah, that's true. I was, uh, before, when I did it, I was think, um, looking at the enemy draft more and thinking if somebody can cancel it. I, I knew that Puk couldn't. But, uh, yeah, I w just wanted to make sure that I don't fuck up the TP. You can also make an educated guess if an enemy 3, position 4 or 5 would stand there to cancel it. But, but if you would look at the rune timer, it's, it's way too early for anyone to hang around the middle. No, no. And the last thing you can do is actually check the minimap and see that the snapfire is on the bottom lane. Yeah, that's true. It happened once with Putsch. <laughs> he hooked me. Oh yeah, with Putsch, you gotta be extra careful because they will uh, want you earlier. Anyway, uh, the, the same point I said earlier that you must not waste any time extends to the fountain here. Mm. Considering, considering you have teleported with around 30% of your resources, as you can see, mm. your job is to move back to lane. ASAP, no lingering. If you right click the middle right now and spam battle on the way, you will not lose any mana as you walk out. Yeah, so. And again, that's that's five seconds saved. Yeah, there's no reason for you to hang, do a, 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 a bit of circles in the fountain. Just as soon as you teleport it back, walk out immediately and spam okay. battle. Okay, okay. That will save you 10 seconds in the long run, and that's the difference between one, two, or three creeps. Yeah, that's good. He was slow, he should have pushed more. Yeah, the puck didn't realize the option he had. If he had <laughs> pushed under the tower, you would have lost probably everything but the last three inch creep hit. Yeah. In this case, the play worked out. Yeah. That's why I don't usually recommend this play, because uh, in, in higher, at least in Mars, the players will recognize that you're gone, will understand what's happening, and will simply either hold the lane in place and deny the creeps, or push the creeps and deny the creeps. So you. If you try yeah. to do the same play and you're not efficient with your mana, with your walking back, with teleporting back, you you will lose more than if you would have stayed on lane and, and, and sent some resources. Yeah, good point. That's good that he did, it wasn't good, the puck. The puck. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, against the heroes that can easily secure runes, the, the better play is actually to go to base to refill the battle because there's mm -hmm. always risk involved in catching the rune in those yeah. cases. Anyway, laning phase is going pretty pretty well, all things considered. We did, we yeah. did have some minor adjustments we could have done, but other, other, other than that, you're like 85-90% uh, of your laning capacity here. Yeah, that's good. Not too bad. Now, at this point, if you would just, uh, look over your experience bar, what does it tell you? I'm always uh, almost level 6. Yes, and what that, that also tells you about Puck? Uh, he's also almost level 6, but I, yes. was like, uh, I was like that we are kind of even, and I hope that he didn't get 6 before me. Considering, <laughs> you, considering you did move away to the base, he should have at least one creep of XP advantage. So I would, in these situations, I would be really, really cautious with my health because yeah. all things considered, he should reach level six soon. I mean, you did have the benefit of the small cam, mm. but all things 
equal you should both reach level 6 on this wave and I would be really careful with my health because a competent puck can and will nuke you down with the ultimate that's true let's, let's see. see what happens I, I think I didn't die oh yeah because of that <laughs> he went in stupidly I think he should have waited level yeah, 6 so you would have just gone to the rune probably without uh, going to the lane or just to stay a little bit more high ground, so you don't risk any extra creep damage. I mean, yeah. but yeah, if Puck played better, you would have been dead. And our our goal from this coaching session is to minimize risks against better players. Yeah, that was stupid. I shouldn't have uh, traded, I think. But I evaded the silence, uh, if you just saw that. Yeah, this part was nice, actually. Yeah. I mean, he was go I, I saw him going high ground, right? So... I was like just waiting there and uh, see what he did. And this yeah, guy was, was a... smoked, I think. This was a good play. I would say, based mm. if I were you, based on what I have seen in the lane, mm. I would have skilled Vortex level 5 and tried to make plays because mm. this puck clearly is not as good as he could be and you could have abused it. Yeah, that's true. That's a good example of a farm lane that can be converted into a kill lane because the opponent is not as skillful as you would have expected. Yeah. <clears throat> the problem is I, I, I uh, uh, how do you say it? I un underestimate myself and so I try to go for the safer play. Like if I fuck up my game, I know that uh, I won't be able to recover so good. Yeah, that's a fair point. If you if you don't feel confident enough in your ability, then yeah, the safer route is literally the safer route in this case. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right now, uh, I, th I go top and stack it, and I think the better move is to go to the camp on the top at uh, 30, 53 and then to the, the this camp and then move to the right, right? The best, the best move is actually if we would roll back to the rune timer. You've just mm. received double damage, mm. and you're using it to refill. Actually, with the with runes like that, like I said before, your good game condition that that you have a good game means that your side lanes should be playing well. Yeah, themselves yeah. and with the, with the double damage you have a chance to make it happen mm. so ever, at least at what I do every time I have a chance at a good rune I scan the minimap I scan the map I scan the draft and ask myself what can I do with this rune yeah like right now Slark you know from your level 6 you know that the enemies will not have level 6 because you are mid you yeah. don't always have the bigger level. So you can still comfortably kill Slark, you can still comfortably kill Enigma. Mm. So instead you of. You mean Void, right? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah, Void. My bad. Yeah, yeah same. Same applies. So yeah, yeah. Void is very, very killable. Enigma yeah. is very killable. So I, I can see that you've used. Uh, you had to use double damage to heal up, and that's okay. But in this case, as soon as you have used double damage, you can make a trip to the base. That's one option. Option option A is make a trip to the base, then teleport and use fountain boosted region to arrive at, at very close to a kill location with full health, full mana. Uh, yeah. Second option is to simply pocket the null, which you, which you have done, and, and use the bottle a couple of times and still be near full. But this plan is risky because you will have to walk to your location manually, mm. which, which basically if they have a ward, your entire plan goes to hell because they will see you coming, they will play safe until your DD expires. So I would say the, LDL, the ideal play is here with a good rune like a double damage region, arcane, is to move to the base and try to teleport and make some kills. Hmm. Or you can still risk walking through vision. If, if no gank happens, you, you still haven't lost much, you can teleport back to the middle. Yeah. But the point uh, is, is to make a play with the rune. 
I think it's not a good idea to rotate right now because of the catapult. Ah, but it's low HP and denied. Never mind. Uh, if you're if you're thinking about when can you push, the the first condition you gotta ask yourself if the enemy mid will allow you to push, and Pocky will not, so catapult should not be of your concerns. Uh, no, no, I me meant the other way around. Uh, when if I would um, go back to the base, I mean I just saw the catapult died and was low HP. Uh, they are catapult, but uh, what if I go to a base and then TP bot? Um, and nobody of my people would be admit uh, he can really hit my tower down during the time or the time which I spend. That, that's a valid concern, and I think I've mentioned it to you or someone else during coaching sessions that you can always mm. ask a support to rotate if yeah, yeah. mid gets a little bit too hot. So just because they have a damage threat on the tower doesn't mean that they will approach this damage threat on the tower, and it shouldn't be a concern of yours enough to discourage you from making rotation yourself yeah no it's good yeah i got your idea would you also have done it i mean i don't, didn't have vortex i think that was also a reason uh, why i didn't go bot because i was like with vortex i can make it definitely easier happen uh, but without i was like okay jumping in void maybe i hit him a few times and then he uh, gets um, out with his uh, walk yeah, that's also a valid concern. So I would say if you have reduced skill potential on a hero due to a mechanic, you can always look at another lane mm. where it doesn't matter. So I would say versus Enigma, it doesn't yeah. matter if you have Vortex or not, she ca he cannot escape. Yeah, true. Yeah, but good point. As soon as you have a rune, you, you must ask yourself, can you make an impact somewhere with that yeah. rune? Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, I watched uh, Storm Spirit replay and I saw something why, why, um, in which I was thinking why he did that. He got a haste rune and tp bot uh, to um, gank. And uh, when I thought about it, it was actually a good play because he um, tp and they didn't see him. Uh, it was also what you mentioned, like if they, if you run with the haste rune through the vision, they would just go back. And uh, with the haste rune, he can also run back mid very fast again. Yeah, yeah, that, make, that makes perfect sense. Okay, so not, not, not much is happening. Puck is farming, yeah. you're farming. Again, Puck is not really... Oh wait, where's Puck? Oh, he's gone yeah. back to base. Back to base. I mean, I would Puck expect Puck to it. try to make plays with his ultimate, but he's playing very passively here. Yeah, no, no, he's uh, doing plays uh, on the uh, side lanes now, I think, if I remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like he's starting to do more than I did. Yeah, in that case, if, you heard, if you're noticing Puck, uh, doing stuff in the side lanes, you, you now have two options. Either you rotate to the side lanes to counter initiate, or yeah. you you must exert pressure on the currently vacant mid tower. Yeah. Even even if I saw Hoodwing uh, like roaming around the tower, you have you have kill potential on Hoodwing, or at least damage him enough for him to go away potential on yeah. the middle. Yeah. So as as soon as you see an opening that's where you decide either pressure the mid tower or rotate to the side lanes the last thing you want to do is jungle yeah that's true uh, right now nothing happened and i was waiting for the room the region room yeah i was doing it because i was uh, not sure if they would destroy it before i arrive yeah that, that's okay i can approve this play especially versus yeah. Baku can simply pinion plays I was watching, but I, I couldn't help him. Three players. Another small note, if you, if you have a region and you decide to jungle with it, the last thing you want to do is hit those creeps because they simply take too long and your region is not gonna yeah. be worth it. If you have region, you just zip through all the big camps. Yeah, that's a good point. Not this golems, right? Because of the magic resistance. Yeah, think about it. I mean, half of your region is gone and you're still 
to dealing with the golem camp instead of you could have yeah. taken two both big big camps and that's like four times as much resources as you're getting from here okay yeah. Uh, do you really zip through them, or do you like use remnant and uh, zip? Uh, you zip near to the camp, and then do your regular location and uh, rotation, and then do it again oh. to the next camp. Yeah, because right now we got very little value out of that region rune. That's true. Should have gone to the other camp, the right one, right? Yeah. Usually, if, if I'm not pressuring anything and I, I get a region or arcane, I try to take ancients with it at earlier levels. Oh, really? Yeah, ancients they did have reduced magic resistance, so they're easy, easier to kill now. Yeah, 50%, right? No? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and one ancient camp is more than two big camps, right? Yeah, something like that. I don't, don't recall the exact numbers. Yeah. I thought about TPing there, but it was too late. Yeah, again, if you think about the draft, uh, your own offlane is a Pangolier who does not suffer from the lack of items as much as someone else would. So, I mean, he can still roll, use the ultimate, and, and be disruptive. Oh. So, oh. in this case, in this case, it is a little bit less worthy to teleport to make Bangle this game better and what oh. you're doing right now pressing mid tower I think that's a better play oh. I think I saw park top or something I'm not sure why I'm walking in so far oh no no I want yeah. to yeah another thing you should be thinking about is if, if you have seen puck mm. in the bot lane you must ask yourself how did he get there like if if there was a clash before, if your team were diving their tower, you can you can safely assume that Puck have teleported to mm. to to disrupt that dive. And in this case, this information tells you that Puck will now no no longer have a teleport, and you can pretty freely farm the middle. But in those cases where you're not exactly certain how did the enemy hero that is of a threat to you got there. In mm. that case, you must play more cautiously, and these walks are not permitted. Yeah. I think what you said was what I was thinking. Uh, the puck ganked the Pangolier bot bottom, right? Yes. And he was before at mid, and because of that, I knew that he TP'd, I think. It sounds stupid, but it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, this is the reason why I went in so far, I think. Because yep, right okay. now I'm seeing it and I'm like, why do I go there? Like, if Puck is next to a tower, I would have died. As long as you're thinking about it, that's good. Yeah, no, no, I think that was the reason. Like, uh, otherwise I wouldn't go there. Like, I could not explain now why I would have done that. For any reason. Oh, you see it? Uh, this, this is a word from the enemy at my side, right? Didn't notice it. Yeah, yeah, it is. No. Uh, this was my first rotation, I think. Yeah. And I got it. Didn't seem very much needed. No. Yeah. I wanted to make it sure. Like, was, uh, when I was watching, I was not sure if they can um, kill Void or if uh, they are in danger. I mean, if, if we scroll back to what I said, is that you gotta make sure your side lanes are coming out good. I would yeah. say your top lane, the Slark, is already very much, very much self-sufficient. Yeah. And in that case, if Void cannot kill Slark, which we have saw is very difficult, then I would say rotating top to help kill when it's not needed is simply a waste of resources. And you would have done better map mm. movement-wise if you have continued to pressure mid. Yeah, might be. Might have been. If there were four people top and they all rotated with one singular uh, mission to kill Slark, in that case, yeah, I would say your, your rotation would have turned it around. But mm. uh, from what we saw, the Void had no, not even as close chance to kill Slark. So your, your yeah. rotation wasn't really needed there. Yeah, that's true. 
problem is with this TPs and decisions is that you need to be fast. So yeah, afterwards, I now also saw that I was too slow. Yes, that's that's why you always keep tabs on the current status of the gameplay, like uh, while you're farming jungle, while you're teleporting, walking back to your base, just check the enemy levels, check the enemy items. Yeah. You could easily deduce here that Slark is pretty much, pretty fat and Void is not as fat as his Slark, which significantly reduces his skill potential. Yeah, that's true. And, and that information just tells you that if Slark is being threatened, Mm. You should you shouldn't pay that much attention. Yeah. This is a challenge always as a mid laner, I think, uh, in my opinion. Like you need to be good at mid, and then you also need to check your team's items and enemies' items and where they are. Like the whole, um, you need to know where the enemies are. It's a it's a really good habit you make on any position. Doesn't be have doesn't have to be made. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Anyway, uh. What I've seen right now is you have smoked with your supports, rotated mm. and got a kill. That's really good. As soon as you have a power spike with the orchid, yeah, smoking rotating is a really good play. Good job. Yeah, thanks. You should you should think about it more often and yeah, in in many more matches when you get a power spike through orchid, smoking, threatening mid is always a good play. Yeah. Right now I think I saw many people bot and that had TP on cooldown, so I stayed mid. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Ah, yeah. Oh no, it was stupid. Yeah, it's a mistake. You will see me dying. Oh yeah. I should have not used the Vortex first. I should have just uh, stacked the Gremlin and zipped a few times and then uh, Vortex. And I didn't know that Snapfire was next to me too. Or I could have simply bailed. No. That would have also worked. But what you, you will see in some seconds when I'm back, that it was actually good for us overall, like because they are out right now and uh, I can clean up when I'm back. Yeah, I guess you can make a case that you have baited them. Yeah, the world would here, please. It's a really good game for Slug right now. Yeah, it was doing really good. Like, I was playing. In the beginning, more mediocre. I think I could have played it a bit better, but yeah, was just mostly trying to get my orchid, orchid, and right now I think we are good in a good state. Yeah, your entire team is three k ahead, and despite the enemy lineup being really cancerous, it doesn't at this stage of the game it doesn't impact your play that much because your team is dictating the conditions of the map. Yeah. It was a good, uh, good team, definitely. I also recognized, uh, like I started um, at Legend One, uh, like two months ago, and uh, mostly um, in this bracket you cannot really rely on your team, like um, especially not on the carry. Like you will carry, but uh, mostly only if you create space, and uh, they are not so good at map movements and everything. Um, so mostly, I really had to had uh, um, really big impact. And in my last games, I didn't really play so well, and uh, my team was often really good, like this one. Yeah, that's a good thing to have. Especially yeah. with nowadays, uh, with Storm going the Orchid first route, you're, you're naturally making space for a carry. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, get back into the map movement topic. Hmm. Like, right now, let's again take a pause and examine what's happening on the map. Right now? Yeah, that's what, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, la last thing, last ma major thing we had was uh, a big fight on the mid tower. Hmm. I, don't know, I don't know why, but everyone have scattered. The enemy team have used the coil, have used the black hole, have used the chronosphere, and have used the snap salt, whatever it's called. So I'm not exactly sure why is the mid tower still standing if the enemy mm. could not threaten your team taking it. If if you yourself have noticed this thing, you could simply mm. say, say to your team that, hey guys, enemy has no ultimates, we should take down this tower. Mm. 
True. Since that didn't happen, we, after a little bit of time, after we realize what impact we can have, we must again look at the other available objectives. And again, if you look at top, we have the catapult, and we have mm -hmm. the tower at quite low percentage of, of HP. And again, you think about the map stage state, mm -hmm. uh, enemy has no big ultimates. You have Orchid, your team is extremely ahead, Anyone solo that shows up, you can kill. So, my point is, if you can exert pressure uncontested mm. in this game, in this match right now at this minute, which you absolutely can, because A, your head, B, enemy has no cooldowns, you should do so. The jungle mm. camps are, again, your last priority. Yeah, no, it's true. I think what I didn't want to do is stay, like, what I can improve or could have improved is staying to the tree at the left and waiting for this to happen. But what I didn't want to be is staying at the tower and hitting it because of the Pux silence and dream call. Yeah, it's again a valid concern. So as soon as you see the heroes that threaten a kill on you somewhere else on the map, that's your cue to go where they are not, and again, exert pressure. If we would look at the minimap, we, we have all five heroes on a team, your team, that is extremely ahead. They're all over the place. They're not focused on a single lane, and all three towers are still standing. And, and, and I'm gonna say right this right now, right here. Mm -hmm. This is the reason most people lose games. They have an advantage. They know how to create this advantage, but they do not use this advantage. Right now, once again, what happened? You had a big fight mid with, with poor initiation, poor execution, but extremely good outcome, where the enemy have used entire, the entirety of their kits and teleports and everything. And what happens next is your team just scatters. Yeah, true. We, we should have uh, taken the tower. Yeah. Oh. So. I can understand that the, that the your team might not be thinking about it, but as long as you're thinking about it, as long mm. as you can actively say to the voice chat or the text chat that, hey guys, I think it is really safe to take this or that tower, I'm pretty sure your team would agree, because they're not stupid. If you point out you have no cooldowns, your team will be, hmm, yeah, yeah, that's true, let's go, guys. If they yeah. simply need, need a, 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 a words of encouragement, then go ahead, say it. Your, your job, if you're, if you're seeing more than your team sees, your job is to make sure that the team knows your thoughts. Yeah, no, no, that's true. I, I think I didn't really see it. Yeah, I, I don't know how to elaborate on this topic, but that's, a, that's the biggest reason people lose games, is they're, they're not pushing to their advantage. Yeah, no, that's right. So basically, what I, what I want you to do is to think about it more, and if you can notice it, you can you can tell that to your team. Yeah, I thought you. I was hoping that the supports come faster, but the pot get out. I got out. Yeah. I should have stayed top to pressure the top tower a bit more. Yes, you should have. I mean, at this point, the enemy have had their cooldowns reset. And now the the advantage you had is a little bit gone. Yeah. What ideally what I would have liked to see happen is after that big mid fight before five minutes before, you yeah. would take the mid tower and you would take the top tower, and then you can regroup, then you can smoke, then you can get a few pickoffs, and do the same again. But what happened is your your team scattered, none of the objectives were taken, and now you have taken an unfavorable fight which shouldn't have yeah. happened in the first place, were your team uh, assertive enough after the first fight. Yeah. No, it's, it's, a, it's a good point. I should, we should definitely have taken the mid tower and then get met more uh, wards up in the, their region. Like, if I watch your Storm gameplay and I only focus on the Storm, storm gameplay, yeah. that's what you're doing is completely good, I have no big pointers to point out, 
The yeah. problem in this game so far are the map movements, not the storm gameplay itself. Yeah. Which which is which is a thing that's gonna be a team over many heroes. Like, if you play Storm good, but you're not utilizing the map movements to your advantage, then it's not gonna matter if you play Storm good. And the same with other heroes. If if you play other heroes not as good as Storm, but you know where to be, when to be, yeah. you will still gain MMR because you're boosting your map knowledge as better. Than, than the enemy, the enemy team can. Yeah, no, no, that's correct. But uh, with Storm, I do different things than, for example, with Ember. With Ember, I'm standing more aggressively than with Storm. Yeah, and that's good. The things you will learn about map movements from one hero will easily translate to another hero. And again, that was a good fight, and this this fight should tell you the same thing we have talked about before, that the enemy has exhausted their big cooldowns. Actually, that's that's the thing I should have mentioned first. The, the enemy is only as effective, this draft is only as effective as their big cooldowns are. Yeah. If they don't have big cooldowns, they don't have fighting capabilities. Your team, the only big cooldowns is... Uh, Pangolier's role. Okay. Other than that, you're always ready to fight. So, if we would look from Draft's perspective, the enemy can only fight, uh, compet competently fight every two minutes, while your team can fight much more often. Yeah, so, no, it's the, a good point. Yeah. another way to take advantage of this draft is to simply smoke and stick out fights more often, in between their big cooldowns. While yeah. they have better 5 versus 5, your team has better overall pressure. Yeah, no, it's a good point. I think they used Enigma OT right now and Void's OT before to kill me. Yeah, yeah, they used everything. Yeah, so right now we could actually push, push out lanes and then go smoke. Yeah, the fact that you are going middle, oh, you're not. Damn it! I kind of hoped you would hit a tower. Yeah, I didn't feel so safe being alone there, I think. Uh, if you would, again, look at the enemy's perspective. If they have big cooldowns used, what will they do? They will teleport to the farm lanes. So, mm. we did see that Void teleported to bottom to farm the creeps. Snap is mid because supports have easier time defending towers. So, Enigma would also be either at the middle or at the top. You could still linger around in the middle, they have no big cooldowns, they have nothing to threaten you with. Mm. So linger around, see the teleports, if you, are, you will either force more of them to teleport middle, which is space, or they don't and you do good damage to the tower or maybe even kill the tower. Yeah. No cooldowns on them means greater freedom for you to play aggressively. So yeah, for the third time, jungle is the last place you want to be. Your team is still ahead, the enemy team still doesn't have their big cooldowns, mm. and you have all the freedom you and your team to make plays. Yeah. Bango has the right idea. See, that's very good. And that's, that's the thing you should uh, exercise more often. If, if, you, if you know the enemy core hero is going to teleport to the farm lane, you can already pre-place yourself on the mm. path where he would come. Like, I would think after the big cooldowns, like I said, the Void will not want to fight. He will want to teleport to farm, and if you, if you would think which is the best lane, it's the lane which has the closest creeps to the tower. So, yeah, 
if you decided not to pursue the mid tower route, mm. then you could you, you could you could have walked way earlier and intercepted Void also way earlier because you were thinking about where Void would spawn, where Void would go, and since you you know that Void is very killable, you could have killed him like thirty seconds earlier than you did. Yeah. The problem is I didn't, uh, like I was assuming they have a ward in the mid and if I go directly from the mid position where I was to bottom lane, uh, I would have been seen, I think. That's why I went this bigger road. Oh, so you actually did think about uh, taking the ward out directly, yes. yeah? Yeah, I mean, I, like um, in my recent games, I'm mostly, I mostly like to play around uh, like a dire side at mid at bottom. Uh, and the independent of the heroes and uh, like when I wanted to walk like if the mid tower is not down like right now I'm just assuming they have vision at the mid and uh, I wanted to walk around them like not directly yeah okay that makes sense that makes sense all good then I was leashed, right? I'm not sure why I didn't jump out. Yeah, yeah, you were. Hmm. Still a good fight. Let's uh, let's talk itemization. Against the enemy team, which can kill you. I am. I'm not even sure sure myself how to approach this lane. I'm, this this game regarding items, I'm just sure that the bloodstone is probably the last thing you wanna buy, because if mm. you get caught, bloodstone or not, you should be dying. Mm. So, I myself would have probably went Yules into BKB, mm. because each of those items will still let you do something, while bloodstone would not so save it with yules you could you could remove puck silence and counter initiate on someone you could mm. also use enigma if he black holes you could use void if he uses ultimate yeah you, with yules you have a uh, build a little bit better play making capabilities yeah and, and and bkb would let you survive pax initiation way better yeah. again we still have the issue of voids Old and Enigma Salt, but at yeah. least Yul's BKB still takes good care of at least Buck's part of, of locking you down. Yeah, you can see it in the next seconds. My item choice will change in the next second because I was thinking, like, <laughs> I don't about the this um, mask, but I was then um, swapping to BKB next okay. because I had the same thoughts. Uh, right, I don't know when I did it, but it was uh, like in in few minutes I would change it. I, I didn't go the bloodstone. Yeah, cool. The bloodstone is only useful if you, if you if um, how do I say this? If the enemy does not have a good kill threat on you, then yeah, you can go a little bit greedier, go with bloodstone. But if uh, the enemy has heavy lockdowns and stuff, then you should play defensives first. Yeah. I don't remember when, but I changed it and I didn't go with the bloodstone. Like right not not uh, like not right now. But there's the next now. Did you see yep. it? Yep, yep, there we go. I was thinking about the same, like I'm because of the puck mainly. Like against um Void and Enigma I was thinking about Eon this later. But not sure. Well, anyway, let's again take a moment to discuss the map movements, like uh, Void is dead, your team is moving with 4. Actually, I don't I don't have any insightful commentary. I think what's happening right now is the correct play. Your team is mm -hmm. moving as 4, and you yourself is pushing the closest lane, which will eventually merge with your team, and at any rate, you can always join the fights with your ultimate. So, so far, so good. Uh, no, I wanted to be close to the bottom lane, and... I think why I went mid was uh, I watched a lot of PSJ's uh, um, replay analysis and he uh, from, puts a lot focus on that. For example, right now, if the 
um, if my team wants to make place bottom because they are in the enemy's jungle, um, the other lane next to it all, uh, must also be pushed out. And right now, Pango um, TP'd back, and yeah, I, I, I realized that we cannot play bottom anymore and told my team to go back. Yeah, this is the only ac acceptable condition for you to jungle while you are regrouping. Yeah. Especially if you know that, that, that the enemy team has their ults ready and you are yeah, yeah. in a kill threat, death threat. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think I wanted to actually play with my team a bit more um, uh, only mid and bottom, but uh, with the pango going back, I, yeah, we need to back out. Yeah. The illusion which I sent in, I hope they had a high ground board at their entrance and that they would use uh, maybe a void ulti or something to kill me. Yeah, that makes sense. Sometimes, sometimes it, it works, but yeah, it, if yeah. at at least at higher at higher Mars, if if they see a storm walking, they will ask, "Why is he walking?" Probably an illusion. <laughs> Storms don't walk; they jump. Uh, no, now, what I see, I think it's good. Like we regroup again, and I think there will be a fight soon. Uh, one 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 thing comes to mind is that. Pretty rarely do you have direct vision on the runes. As a storm, you would want direct vision over runes, even if you have to buy wards yourself to make it happen. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm buying a lot of wards and placing them. Um, Why I don't have vision right now, I don't know. Okay, cool. As long as you're thinking about it. Yeah. I think now there will be a situation, I'm not sure if it's right now or in the next uh, fight sequence. Uh, it was really strange. You will see it. All right, I'm waiting. Not sure if, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's right now, but it was a situation when I was not sure where to be because um, yeah, I think it's the situation. I, I could see that you, you can also see it on the mini map. Um, many of them are there at, below the tower. And I was like, I cannot go there, like jumping uh, into a tower because if Enigma or Void is there, I would die. And I wanted to go to the back line. Um, as you can see here, uh, Puck um, brought back, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, as we have established uh, on the beginning of this, this analysis, that you must allow your team to initiate first, because yeah. of the bigger cooldowns. So, I think what, what you're doing right now is, is, is very good. Yeah. Okay, but I was not sure, because I, I just didn't want to go somewhere where they have two of one of those heroes, because they can just lock me down and then I, I die at tower. And this was very greedy and it worked. Damn. I also used my essence ring. <laughs> yeah. My essence ring helped me out. This game is half skills, half luck. And half puck yeah. playing bad. Yeah, that's true. Don't really know why he died actually. He he bought back. Do you remember anything in particular you were wondering about during the mid to late game for this replay? Yes, uh, the situation right now, uh, which you saw, I was I wanted to ask you what would have been the better play if you would have gone um, like I had two options, two big options, right? Either go with my team and dive the tower at the bottom, like going to the enemies and trying to find Void or Enigma, silence him and then kill. But I felt not really. Um, football about that because as I said if Enigma or Void is there and I cannot uh, silence both of them they will maybe kill us or me so I went to the backline yeah and you, you just said it's okay so that's one of the bigger plays which I was unsure of yeah um, yeah yeah right now uh, out of all three cores you're the most killable and as the most killable core you have the least priority of initiation yeah. yeah. Like if they eat Slark up, the Slark will always press R and, and live. Pango always presses R and live. You don't have this luxury. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and item choice, like you, you saw my item choice right now. Um, I went for Orchid and then the um, Kaya and then BKB, 
would you have gone BKB after directly after Orchid or or maybe I would, would I would I would say because we have this game where your team is very much ahead you can mm. itemize a little bit more greedily mm. and yules would definitely give you better right click better mana region and better off offensive capabilities if you go if you rush if you rush bkb you will be starved of damage starved of mana but the bkb will let you survive yeah but in, in this case even if you even if you go that route, your team will compensate for you because mm. the team is ahead. So you can play a little bit more greedily to improve your own stats, if that makes sense. Yeah. So th this choice is, was good, like with uh, the Kaya and then PKB. Uh, I, w I wouldn't say it's ideal. It's still very good that you can, that you can deny Buck's spell kit. But like I said, your team allows you to go even more greedily yeah. and yields before BKB would improve your stats, your pickoff capabilities, your mana region capabilities and offensive capabilities through the uh, yields is active. Yeah. So I, I myself would say that ideally the play would have been to go Orchid, yields and then BKB because your team is mm. ahead and you have the space to do so. Okay, so no Kaya. Well, guy is still good, same as Yules, but it, it doesn't have the the active benefit. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, at, at, at this point, I think your your team is simply too far ahead for the enemy team to make any kind of stopping impact, lasting stopping impact. Yeah, this, this could be true. Maybe we so, can um, make a bit faster the speed of the replay, or you can also stop it if you say that's just one. Yeah, if you think of any more questions for the late game, let me know. Otherwise, I don't think we're getting anything more useful out of this. Yeah, okay. the, the, big, the biggest takeaway is simply that you could have pressured way more efficiently with you and the team. Yeah. I think I don't have really big uh, questions. Maybe right now um, we go for Rosh and I ask my Slug if I can get the Aegis because I want to go in. And uh, yeah, he, I think he took it. Oh, no, no, I, I told him that he can take it uh, also in another game or maybe later. I don't, don't really remember what happened, like, if we took another rush. Uh, I, what I remember was that I had a quest for my Dota Plus <laughs> challenge and I need to dish out enough overload damage and I went for the um, Aghanim shard for that. And also took the other talent. Yeah. But I failed, I had uh, two stars and not three stars. Yeah, yeah I, I have no comment on that. <laughs> yeah like i mean i was pretty sure at this point i think that we just were leading a lot or um, we had a big uh, we were big ahead and could just win the game if we did, don't do stupid things like no buyback and running into them and they use the uh, um, enigma and void ulti this is the only way they can come back to the enemies yeah that makes sense Yeah, but um, regarding your question, if I have any other questions regarding this, I think maybe, um, I think I told my team, um, I'm not sure uh, how long the game overall was because this would uh, then show what I was stating. I think in this game, I told my team, just staff them in the base because I was not like, let's go high ground um, because of their big ultimate. And I knew that I lost a lot of games in the past uh, because we just went in with Aegis and died all and then they the enemies came back. I, I was pretty sure that we, um, right now when we just staff them in the base, push all lanes in farm and then 
um, wait till we feel strong enough, maybe with more items that we can win with 100%. Yeah, that's a uh, in ninety percent of games. That's the winning strategy. It's a really good thing to choke out the enemy in their base yeah. and get way over from that. I would I would say the only uh, games where it's not the case is again when the enemy lineup is simply way better late game than yours. Like so, if you if if you say you have a Slark Juggernaut versus mm. their Terror Blade. You cannot let Hell Terrorblade get you fast, otherwise he will one shot everyone. Yeah. yeah. That that's the prime example, but there, there are more cases where the enemy team is simply better suited late game. And if mm. you choke them in the base for too long and it cannot end, they they will simply get too fat to naturally yeah. repel any attacks. Other than that, yeah, I, your your line of thinking is absolutely correct. If if you if the if both teams are at equal more or less equal power Choking them yeah. out is the safest route. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think then this is what happened in the next minutes, just that we pushed out the waves and I told my team just to staff them, uh, play at their side and wait till we, maybe they do a mistake or we have a big lead like we had to have an advantage oh yeah one more thing i just remember to say is that in this game hmm. uh a on disc is of really high value high right high value yes yeah. very good very good pick yeah like if if you would fit a on disc after the bkb they hmm. they no longer have kill threat on you because they are so under fun so naturally any black hole or corner sphere mm. will simply not be enough to kill you and you would outlast it pop bkb and turn the, the fight around so yeah. in, in these cases against bigger uncountable ults aeon disc does the wonders yeah uh, i also asked you or mentioned it in the beginning um when we talked about itemization uh, i wasn't sure like would you have gone uh like um after uh, after the bkb the eon this or would you have uh, like i did platform right now and then uh, i'm was thinking about eon this i think uh are you asking when to get the eon disc yeah would you have um gone it after directly after bkb or because you saw me finishing the platform right now uh let, let, let's think about it if you use, if if you have Bloodstone and Aeon Disc, and yep. they lock you down, what happens is that after the Chronosphere or or the Black Hole is over, they can still apply a Silence to you, or a Stun, mm. or whatever any follow up, and kill you. BKB is the only condition where they cannot do that. Yep. So you you still need to have survivability after Aeon Disc. And after you outlive the big bad ult, yeah. so I would say in this case BKB is absolute necessity for the absolute necessity for Aeon Disc to work in the first place. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, uh, I um, I went BKB and then Bloodstone. Would you have gone um, the Aeon Disc after the BKB, which I had, or uh, like what I did now? Yeah, after the BKB would make more sense, but. In this game, it's it's not the clear cut answer because because the enemy team is so behind. Mm. But in in the same scenario where the teams were more equal, uh, Aeon Disc would have been of more value than Bloodstone. Yeah. Yeah, I think I mean we our lead was so big, as you can see that uh, yeah it doesn't really matter and m probably more. Matters more when um, uh, the game is a bit tougher. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could have went three blinks and still won. Yeah. Well, if you have no further questions, I think we can conclude this analysis for, for today. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the time. All right, cheers. Ending the recording. Yeah.